All right, good morning, everybody. <laughs> and I am having some difficulty sharing my screen, of course. So uh, if this is working for you, uh, please let me know in the chat. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, uh, mm, mm, I don't seem to be able to, <laughs> to do my exercises, my warm-up exercises. If you've watched them, right, feel free to, to do your, your warm-ups uh, as per usual. Well, good morning. Welcome to Drawing for Tattooers. I'm your host, James Wisdom. Uh, and today, uh, as promised, we're going to check out uh, Bern Hogarth's uh, Dynamic Wrinkles and Drapery. Hmm. And uh, it's a very interesting book. And I believe that just adding these, uh, all of these references to your library are going to be really useful for you as you, you know, continue to advance your drawing. Uh, I have to trace all the time. I do. I tattoo every day, and so I trace all the time. Uh, likely, uh, this is something that you do as well. So I really love composing my own images, and that's another skill set. And it, it, uh, it's not a, a total mystery. There is a process that you can sort of follow to help you, you know, come up with these compositions. But of course, uh, again, it's a process, right? It, you can't just race ahead, to, you know, to the uh, the finalized thing. It does take, um, you know, study and also uh, a lot of a lot of elbow grease, as it were, a lot of hard work. Uh, well, with me this morning, we've got uh, we've got Kyle. Let me see. Hello, mm, Kyle. <laughs> Your screen is small. I don't know how to make it. Um, That's fine. You're one. opening the show. Do your thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to make it. Uh, <laughs> make it work. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? Doing good. How about you, James? Oh, no. I, uh, for some reason. Let me see. How about now? Can you, can you hear me? I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I can okay. hear you. You hear me before? I don't even. I, I don't know if my headphone was working. Yeah, yeah, I could hear you before. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kyle. Uh, how are of you course, doing? Always doing great. Doing good. Doing good. Um, I don't know where my iPad is right now, but um, yeah, how are you? <laughs> well, it's Monday morning, um, and I'm struggling through the through the drawing stream <laughs> as usual, <laughs> and so. Uh, yeah, it's uh, fun times it had by all, but it's great. No, I mean, I, I, I always love doing this, and I always, uh, I, it, I get really anxious before doing it, and then, you know, we get through with it, and then at the end, I have this, I have this really incredible feeling, like uh, not only that we connect with people, I make connections too. You know, like the stuff that I talk about, a lot of things I've, I like to review the material, the cover before I do it. <laughs> <laughs> before mm -hmm. I, you know, cover it and say, but, uh, but something about going over it, you know what I mean? And people give me questions and stuff. Uh, it really does. Um, oh, uh, okay. So, um, but, uh, it, it helps. It just, it helps me. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for myself. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's always fun. You know, I like to, to talk tattoos and ta talk art and stuff like that. And there's so many different, Oh, there's just so much knowledge and information out there that I have. I don't even have like the slightest idea about. And then I come on here and you guys talk about stuff and we're just like, holy cow, you know? So it's just, it's, it's always a, been a rewarding experience for sure. I love that. And I think that's a great segue to uh, something that I really want to, I, I really want to touch on mm -hmm. because it's important for tattooing and for health. Uh, and that is, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share uh, just a portion, not the whole thing, but just a portion of a, of a brand new report that, uh, that has come out. So, you know, what is, uh, 
What's in my ink? Um, this is a scientific report about the chemical composition of tattooing inks in uh, the U.S. Okay. And so uh, I think what's important to remember here is, again, this is a scientific study, right, that it is, it's, to my, it's to my understanding that it was, uh, there was a grant that was awarded, like a federal grant was awarded to uh, the researchers uh, to perform this study. And they used uh, very advanced techniques and scientific method to determine like what's in the tattooings. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately they found that what is listed on the bottle is not what's inside the bottle. <laughs> what's listed outside the bottle is not what's inside the bottle hmm. in a great number of cases. So um, uh, next month, I'm, I'm actually going to, to be interviewing uh, John Swerk. He's the, you know, one of the lead authors on this study. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the plan. I'm hoping to get a chance to do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, here's a couple of notes about it. There doesn't seem to be a, a health crisis in you know in the in the states about in relationship to tattooing. Mm -hmm. So I, and I don't think that's what is being put forward here with this. Mm -hmm. It's simply uh, it just bringing to light that there is a discrepancy between what's what's listed and what is uh, what's actually inside of these okay. of these things and so um we've talked a lot about uh upcoming fda regulations mocha mm -hmm. and the like uh these are these are things that are going to affect the tattoo industry in the near future mm -hmm. so uh, having this sort of information having a really accurate uh de description on the bottle for instance is going to uh i think be a, a you know a, a necessary transparency within this industry right so um let me i'm going to scroll down there's a there's this very telling graphic it's it's somewhat scary all right you can't see that okay this so uh and I'll zoom in a bit, right? This is a very simplified graphic um, that starts to, you know, that talks about the results of the study. So you can see uh, listed on the left, there are several brands of ink. Maybe you have some of these brands. I know I have some of these brands in my cabinet right now. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, listed across the, the top register, there's all these colors and so on and so forth. You can see the key at the bottom where it where it talks about, uh, you know, just indicating is there a major discrepancy, minor discrepancy, or is it very correct? Uh, and I you can see <laughs> there's across the board, there seems to be a problem here, right? This is what the researchers have discovered. There's a problem. Now, there's a lot of articles that have been coming out uh, in in the in the media about this study uh, i wouldn't uh i wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't seen one of these articles very recently essentially though uh, this is just a this is just bringing to light that there is that there is a discrepancy i i don't know like if there's uh if there's a cause for real alarm, you know, oh my God, I'm using this thing. Like what's been well established in the tattoo industry is that is that many of these inks, I can't speak to all of them, but I'm just saying many of these inks we know um, work well for us, right? Through our own experience. And then of course, through the experience of, uh, you know, like uh, our colleagues that, that people uh, they have a they have a overall uh, there's there's very low incidence of say allergic reaction for instance right or 
Uh, they hold up well over time. Um, so we're not trying to like make everybody panic and say that there is uh, uh, some kind of like immediate health crisis. But what I think is important here is that we want our the ink companies that we love. We we love our ink. You know, we really love our ink. We want to see you do, um, you know, better. <laughs> you know, we want to see you. You know, we want to see you like really put together something that uh, as accurate as you can, be as transparent as you can with the ingredients that you have in there. Um, and I think that's really what what's useful about this report. Um, so uh, anyway, I wanted to share this. Uh, it's something that uh, has really emerged very recently. This is an important topic. Mm -hmm. And you might very well get questions from your clients. Uh, you know, hey, I saw this, what's, what's going on? I think the point is not to be too alarmed by the report, but just to know that there's a, there is a need um, for this industry to, to self-regulate, right? We can, you know, uh, we need accurate reporting mm -hmm. on the on the label, right? It's really yeah. really crucial. Um, Hundred percent transparency. Yeah, I. Uh, I would love it if we had, uh, if there's anybody in the chat, right? Hmm. Yeah. Good morning, creature. Really good to, really good to see you. Um, I, a, I, I apologize. What, what, what was the, the website that, I mean, the, the article, the, the analytical what? Yes. So, uh, the, the website or the, um, the, or the title of this, the title of this um, report, and I'll just I'll just jump to it now. All right, so oh sorry, so sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I I definitely. Um, so here's the here's the thing. This article or this report rather, uh, it's behind a paywall. So it's you know there's there's like if you really want to read it, uh, you know, I'm not going to discourage anybody from reading it. There is a there's a price to pay to read it. The other thing is that, for the most part, if you if you actually read the articles and sort of and don't get alarmed by the headlines of them, the article, the most of the articles that I've read about it, they do report accurately what is said here. Uh, but I think it can it just is, it is alarming immediately as you look at it. So um, now, uh, what is very interesting? Um, let's see here, I'd like to. I'd like to share another thing if I can <laughs> with everybody and I don't I'm gonna I don't know if uh, I'm hoping that this will work but uh, new intent yes okay so I'm hoping that uh, yeah that this will work for uh, everybody I'm gonna I'm gonna hit play uh, let's see I'm gonna scroll to hmm. Hold on. Hmm. this one. Hoping that this will, we can share this with uh, with the gang. That some don't. Um, in Europe, when there was sort of a, a pulse of well, research on this about this. a decade this ago, is Josh there were Burke. a few studies that looked at what was in tattoo wings. And almost universally, they found that in the inks they looked at, there were presence of metals that weren't listed in the ink on the ink labels there were issues where the the inks were mislabeled so what was we were talking about earlier with the thalassinins um that you know heavy metal excuse me heavy metal level levels were much higher than you would predict um and what's interesting about the last example is that the method they used to to break the inks down, when we tried to replicate it, we, we learned it doesn't actually break the inks down all the way. So 
that snapshot was was incomplete. So we do a lot of works just studying inks themselves. Um, we use what's known as microwave digestion. So it's basically a, a you know an ultra intense microwave that causes very high heating um, under pressure. And we do that because if there are metal containing components in the inks, we put uh, strong acids in, in with those inks and that breaks the, the inks down. And then we can quantify the metal in those inks. Um, we do a lot of electron microscopy to actually look at the structure of these inks, you know, on, on a very small scale to try to see, you know, what's going into it. Are we looking at sort of small nanomaterials that there may be some concerns about them becoming mobile in the body or, you know, is it sort of big bricks of pigment or something in between? Um, and we do some other work just again, trying to, to quantify what's actually in the pigment. Is it what in the, in the case where we have some information, is it what's on the label or is there something else in there? Um, early returns suggest that the issue of mislabeling or incomplete labeling may also be um, present in some of the inks that we've looked at. Um, it's certainly you know, not necessarily all of the inks in this country, but we're finding inks that are only supposed to contain copper. And when we digest them, there's something else in there, probably cobalt. Um, so that's sort of how we approach this. Um, and the goal with the last last part looking at the inks is partly to inform the other areas of research so we know what we should be looking at in terms of you know making our own inks to test things you know should there be solids molecular pigments a combination of both <coughs> excuse me um and then also our, our long-term goal with that is to start making this data available to the wider <coughs> community so that you know there is some some degree of insight if you're, you know, choosing your inks um, and you have, you know, a, a customer who's got a chromium allergy that, you know, we can say, look, this ink is full of chromium, this might not be a good choice. And, and also try to create a, at least a snapshot of what is in the inks now so that 10 or 20 years from now, we have some record in case we need it at that point. Uh, so that was a snippet from from an interview, uh, you can if you scan the QR code that I have on the bottom, you can uh, you can get to that episode. It's uh, you know an episode from Reinventing the Tattoo, where Guy Atchison and Lord Gregory actually interview John Swerk. And this this was like two years ago, right? <laughs> this is a very uh, very pertinent issue that's that has emerged very recently, uh, reemerged as it were. Here they are talking about this a few years ago. Um, before uh, inks were banned in Europe, there there's uh, there was a new regulations in Europe called Reach, and the Reach regulations actually banned blue and green pigments in America. I I believe I I, I don't want to see uh, blue and green ink get banned. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want a federal regulation uh, to to you know, prohibit ink. But I really believe that there's an important role for the ink companies, the ink manufacturers to uh, to take here. And that would be to, you know, to accurately report what's, what's in the bottle. Just like Dr. Squirk was saying that we need not only to be informed so that we give our clients the, the best possible outcome uh, with the least amount of risk, but also that like there is a snapshot that going forward, uh, that we know what was in, what was the composition of ink. And so there can be, uh, so further research can be done, right? If you, if we don't know what was in it at the time, how can we have accurate research going forward, right? Like yeah. the next generation, so on and so forth. How are they going to be able to know what's, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, is there any risk or what or what would be the risks of getting mm -hmm. you know a tattoo done i believe that uh it it can be 
very safe. And I, you know, I have tattoos. I do them. Probably, if you're watching this, you likely have tattoos or do them. And so, uh, and I think that uh, you know what we need to do going forward is, uh, you know, really call uh, on our on our ink suppliers to give us an accurate labeling. And that's gonna yeah. that's just gonna you know be a really uh, uh, vital step, mm -hmm. right? As as new regulations are are gonna they're already they're on the way. Right. So it's not doom and gloom, but it's mm. it's gonna be difficult, right? There's gonna be some challenges and stuff going forward. So mm. anyway, I wanted to I wanted to touch on that and uh again I'm I'm also uh um we're in the works of scheduling a, you know an, another interview with Dr. Swerf from mm -hmm. reinventing and, and uh so I hope that uh if you get a chance to watch that video, um there's so much technical information in there so if you're interested right there's more anyway that's i wanted to i wanted to touch on that <laughs> it's been on my mind yeah. right and i and i i hope that it's coming through like we're not being alarmist but there is a there is an issue and we uh we want to know i think that's mm -hmm. it we just we just want to know and i don't think we would you know i don't think we can determine yet based on what's, you know, if the labels are 100% accurate. I don't think we could determine yet, like, what that means. Mm -hmm. But as the future unfolds, it'll help us start to know a little bit more about the repercussions. Right? With every action, there's a reaction, right? We, that's a basic, you know, ism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, uh, we, you know, we need to know so that way we can make, we can make the most informed decision. Mm -hmm. going forward. So anyways, uh yeah. Kyle, what do you uh what are your thoughts here? You know, like oh. I'm not sure how I'm not sure how much you've been like um paying attention to this at all. And what do you is it is, well, I just wanna I just wanna get your reaction, you know, I think well, like I guess like the, the I don't know how much weight the argument has, but the the thing that I kind of see similarities to. So regardless of um, let's say some of the, the ingredients in the tattoo inks uh, cause, you know, cancer and cause all these, you know, issues and stuff like that. Um, what, what's, the, what's the difference between that and um, cigarettes? Uh, we're making a, a, a choice. We don't know what's fully in it, you know, type of thing, but we're making this choice because we want this thing. You know, uh, we want this tattoo, so we're going to get it. We're not 100% sure what's in the ink, this, that, and the other thing. Um, it's something that people have been doing for a long time, so... We, we do it, whatever um, type of thing. What's the, what's the difference between that um, is the information comes out and be like, hey, there is possibilities that this, you know, there's causing cancer, you know, cancer causing ingredients and this, this, and this type of thing. What's the difference between that and somebody going to a gas station and spending $10 on a pack of cigarettes? You know what I mean? Like they, they, they definitely know that the, the harmful um, parts of the cigarettes. And I know like the, the weight of this argument may not have like the most but like it's the first thing that comes to my mind it's like well yeah if we know then it's our own choice you know it's, it's our body and stuff like that um I, I can understand in the circumstance of like in the long-term effects of like it weighing down on like the health healthcare system and stuff like that if it becomes like this big epidemic thing whatever um i can understand that kind of thing but like what's the what's the difference between that and the cigarettes itself because like cigarettes kill a, 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 a lot of people you know um, every year. So, and I, I don't, I can't really say that there's been a single person that has died due to a tattoo, you know, uh, cancer being caused by a tattoo. Now, granted that hasn't been documented and stuff. It could have been, I don't know. Um, but like, I don't know. I just, I feel like, um, I, I understand the concern and wanting to, to regulate things to make sure things are safe for, for the populace. I get that. Um, but I just feel like it, 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 it on the, on the, on the, um, it's almost a little excessive, I guess, um, when it comes to, it. I understand, I understand the need for it and stuff like that. But like with that, that argument, I feel like the, the, the banning, the blue and the green, you know, can be, um, like a, a, a lot now, now if, if there's still a lot, I don't know. So it's a, an extremely uneducated opinion, um. But I just, I, that's all I can come back to. It's like, well, 
if we sign a consent form saying, hey, I acknowledge this, I understand this, I'm still going to get the tattoo, then what's the deal? You know, what do you, what do you think? So, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me if I'm, if I'm picking up what you're saying. I, people need to make, you know, uh, an informed choice, yeah. right? So if you are, of course, um, making that choice to get inks, let's, let's say it, we learn later through research, it, it, it's determined that there's some, there's some help. Missing. Um, I am with you. I don't think that that should prohibit it necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know, it might very well be a, a you know a choice because we have those choices in our in our society within culture. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can decide what's best for you personally. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of that, you know, like uh, so. And I don't want to draw any more uh, you know equivalencies, but I think that uh, we the only way to grasp it is to you know is to make make a make a connection, right? And a lot of times, uh, I think that sometimes that can lead us astray a bit. You know, making mm-hmm. building these equivalencies, they can be they can be false to a certain degree. And mm-hmm. so, what I you know, part of me is like, well, I get that that there's a danger, and we you know, like for instance, like within smoking, that choice. This isn't as far as we know. This isn't anywhere near that. It, but as far as far as we know, we don't know because there isn't there hasn't been a lot of research. Yet, you know, mm-hmm. all that we know is through anecdotal observations that okay. we have tattoos or that, for instance, uh, you know, uh, we know people who have had them for a long time. So there's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of ways that we can, you know, we can make, come to these assessments, but we just don't have a, a there just hasn't been a lot in the way of researching long-term effects. I think that that's going to be really valuable information going forward. And if the federal government just comes in and says, you can't have this anymore. You, you know, even though like through, through trial and error, tattoo artists and the tattoo industry and community have, you know, carefully compiled this again, through trial and error, right? Like this really extensive list of products and, you know, uh, things that are, are, uh, we found to be useful. Um, Right. Uh, if when we haven't uh, when we haven't uh, uh, if those things get just taken away, right? Then I think that's actually uh, not not the not the best course, right? I don't think we want uh, this overregulation. We need to move slowly and carefully. But uh, but yeah, let's see. Um, we've got some. Uh, I so I appreciate I appreciate your um, your thoughts on that. That's just my thought. These are just opinions, right? It, I think oh, that yeah, we're, yeah. You know, that's, I, I'm, that's... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to educate myself on it as well. I want to bring it yeah. to everybody's attention, but I believe that if we, uh, just, if we just reject science because it doesn't like fit our ideological sort of notion, that is like tattoo good, right? <laughs> that's our ideology, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Tattoos are good, and we want to use the ink. If the science comes back and says like these things aren't good, then again, that's another conversation to have. Okay. I think, I, I, I believe. Yeah. But if we just yeah. reject it and say like, no, it doesn't fit my notion, so I have to reject this science. Okay. Again, I'm not saying that we have to like uh, just accept the conclusions of a particular scientific notion. And it, it take, it, it's, it's, a, it's a dialectical relationship. There's a back and forth. You have to keep the conversation going. So of course we're gonna we we know through real life experience that I, we all believe in tattoos and we think that they make the world a better place. Yeah. If science comes back, I'm saying you know, I'm not I'm not trying to make a big other out of science, but I'm just saying like if a scientific uh, uh, inquiry were to come back and to say something that is against our you know belief in tattoos making the world a better place, we ought to investigate that further. Yeah. But I don't think we should reject it or try to abuse abuse research to to get it to just to say what we want, yeah. right? And Thank certainly, you. like you know, just prohibiting it by the government, I think uh, that'll lead to that'll lead to worse outcomes. Yeah, I think I think that'll yeah. lead to worse outcomes. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And 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 like it's a very valid point. Towards like these are very 
important conversations to have. And then with the, when the science comes out, you know, of course our opinions will, will shift and change. And, and while you're, you know, talking about the whole, like my, my, my comparison, it's like, well, yeah, but that's like, that's, that's the cigarette industry. This isn't the, you know, we're, we're not worrying about the cigarette industry. This is the tattoo industry, you know, so to, to be able to take that information and see if we can improve upon it um, the best as we can um, to, to take those things into consideration because to, to basically just say like, you know, piss off when the information comes out, I, I guess that's, that's, um, that's letting the client tell down to a certain extent, you know, cause like we do want to apply the best product that we absolutely know we can. Um, and if ingredients need to change in order for us to produce better, you know, tattoos, uh, health wise, then, you know, so be it. Um, there, there's nothing that comes without, you know, hurdles. There's, there's nothing that comes without obstacles and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. To, to, um, lean into the science when it comes out about like, oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Perfect. Okay, cool. What can we do to change it? Is there, there um, ways to improve upon uh, this new information? Cause, because like you, you, you were saying like in like, you know, tattoo good, you know, stuff like that, like back in the day, like cigarettes are like, oh yeah, cigarettes are healthy. No, 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 they're, they're not at all. You know, like, I don't know if you know, but uh, yeah, no. Um, so it could be the same thing to where, oh, yeah, yeah, tattoos are fine. And then information comes out. It's like, oh, well, if we keep doing this, then tattoo not fine, you know. Um, so um, I, 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 I understand that it, it's scary for all this stuff to be coming about to where, well, what if they, they ban the blue? What if they ban the green? But I guess like taking that information and being like, well, what can we do? I, I guess is a um, probably the lot lot smarter path and choice to go about um i think i'm rambling at this point but um, no 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 not at all because i think uh like i i believe in what you said like uh, that we have to we just do it as you know as like as thinking creatures right we you know there's something that we grasp and and we have to relate other things to it so your analogy to like you know the dangers of of one thing right um it makes it, it, it makes it comprehensible in a certain way. And so I, I, I believe that we're all kind of doing that. And it's, uh, it's, it would be, a, you know, we'd be, we're going to be captured by our own, you know, uh, uh, our own prejudices, mm -hmm. right? If, if you don't like tattoos, you're going to look at this report and say, told you, I told you yeah. so, you know what I mean? But if mm -hmm. you love tattoos, you're going to look at this report and say like, forget that. That yeah. doesn't matter. And I, and I don't, I think I'm not going to say that the truth is in between all the time, but in this case, there, there's certainly like a, you know, we, there, we need to look further on this. We need to, uh, when I say we, I mean, we have a role as tattooers mm -hmm. and researchers have a role as researchers. And mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult, you know, um, it's going to be difficult to come to a consensus so that's why probably at this point we need to do everything we can to to work together mm -hmm. to, to find a way forward. Um, and so that's uh, <laughs> it's a is a it is tricky. It's really tricky. There's no answers today, and again, there may not really be any. Um, but I having it take out the possibility that there will be, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. having having some knowledge about this could be really powerful. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm, I'm fascinated, fascinated mm -hmm. by this. And, uh, um, and I, so the, the, uh, I'm going to put the QR code up, uh, again for the, you know, for this, um, uh, for this particular episode from reinventing and really, you know, so what's interesting, you know, what, what it centers around is this idea of that light changes the chemical composition of the tattoo inks. It does. That's established. And um, what it leads to is this larger conversation, again, that was being, that's been happening for years now. We're just, you know, maybe we're just, maybe you're just catching up. This has been, this is a long ongoing conversation about the repercussions of, 
uh, getting tattoos, and of course, uh, what are what are the roles that we all would play in this? So uh, it's a really fascinating uh, interview, and so I would encourage you to check it out. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, uh, it, it doesn't. Again, it doesn't give you any. It just gives you insight. It doesn't give any answers. Just like this. <laughs> um, so, but keep aware. Right, just stay aware of it. And it's going to be something that's uh, you're going to hear a lot more about, I believe, in the near future. Um, mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's uh, that's that part. <laughs> End of part one. <laughs> End of part Topic one. number one. <laughs> Topic number one. Now, segue into the next topic. Uh, so again, uh, now thank you for thank you for hanging in there, everybody. If you are uh, enjoying um, our content, we'd love it if you liked and subscribed. And of course, uh, you can tag a friend who's uh, who's interested in tattoos and uh, these topics. So let me uh, let me share ah, again. Oh, hold on. <laughs> it wouldn't be Monday, right? If we okay. So, uh, yep, very, uh, a very wonderful book. Um, here's a, here's a QR code for you to, to check out this book that we're going to be exploring. It's, uh, called Dynamic Wrinkles and Drapery. It's by Bern Hogarth. We have looked at Bern Hogarth's work before. If you have, uh, been studying art for a while, it's likely that you know this author and artist. Uh, he's made a series of books that are very, uh, they're very informative and, and well written. So, I would like to. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you now, and I hope that. Yeah, I hope you can enjoy it. Okay, so. Direct thrust wrinkle. So again, we, we, we said the, the title of the book, um, Dynamic Wrinkles and Drapery by Bern Hogarth. And we're going to look at one chapter in it. There's lots of really great chapters. Um, but I figured that this one is uh, something that's, you know, could be really, uh, you know, directly applicable. So let's zoom in. And again, there's like really great illustrations. Stop me, Kyle, if you, you know, if you want to check out an illustration further, I'm sure other people, I get all lost in the reading, right? But mm -hmm. like, you know, for, for the audience, like they may want to, they may want to check out some of the illustrations a little bit more closely, but okay. let's, let's get into it. So, so this is chapter two. There's a really great chapter that talks about kinetic energy. And again, if you've read Bern Hogarth uh, books before, then you would, you know, there's all kinds of really great information. So, all right, let's begin. The direct thrust of the body members acting on a variety of clothing types are responsible for the greatest amount of wrinkle patterns. When the members of the body extend outward from the anchor points of the thrust or pulling action creates direct thrust wrinkles. These wrinkles radiate along the lines of force. They are also among the most common of wrinkle patterns and they can be observed in garments acted on by the direct thrust generated by walking, stretching, and a number of other activities often involving the arms and legs. Direct thrust wrinkles, however, do not usually result in the most interesting of wrinkle patterns. I urge you to keep an open mind on this point, since in the final event, you are the judge of what is best and beautiful, and you prove it by making personal choices of forms. There is no higher law. I really like that part. I think that's, I think that's really, uh, I, honestly, I, I kind of relate it to what we were just talking about. Um, but anyway, if you define the sites of forces of tension, the pattern of wrinkles will follow. Study this figure lunging against a door. Note the anchor points, armpit, midline, crotch, and a mere coat button at the waist. This button is central to the, rad uh, to the radial wrinkles of the torso. The outward thrusts emanating from the armpit appear as long spiral stretches across the curves of the arm sleeve and on the coat underneath. So we'll see some arrows that you can see the arrows, hopefully, that are uh, you're kind of giving us this idea. 
Uh, now see the two sets of wrinkles that start at the midline crotch anchor. Uh, the long arrows trace the path of the forces influencing the wrinkles on the figure's pant leg, and the foreshortened curved arrows show those at right. So we'll scroll down here. We're going to see a little bit more of this illustration. Back up just a little bit. And I believe that's, you know, we can we can feel the tension, right? There's that button, right? And, and radiating from it are all these lines of force. And it produces wrinkles. Um, something that I, that I thought of right away uh, was this idea of flow, right? Fit and flow about, oh, across the body. There's something where these, these wrinkles, they sort of naturally fit the, the object, the body in this case, but there's a flow that is happening. Um, I think this can be a really crucial element to our design work. So um, anyways, moving on. I love these illustrations in this book though. They're very, uh, they're just very beautiful. Anyway, yeah, so here again, this idea on the coat that there's a central point from it, right? We're seeing all these wrinkles. Uh, this isn't so much, uh, you know, of a formula as something to start to look for. I think it can be really almost mysterious, you know, when you're trying to, if, especially if you're trying to create wrinkles, let's say, for whatever the case may be, somebody's smiling, for instance, or, you know, somebody's clothing. That's a, that's mainly what this, you know, deals with is that um, almost enigmatic quality of how clothing um, tells, a, tells a story, right? That there's some shape underneath it that is like that this, these wrinkles are demonstrating a flow and a fit around, right? So, all right, back to the text. In the jacket worn by the man shown from the front, the direct thrust wrinkle is in response to a simple tension force. The man's arms uh, raise, revealing anchor points that uh, at the seams in the armpits. The lifting action of the arms uh, drive wrinkles across both sleeves to the outer outlines. The arrow indicates the path of the force released by the movements. Um, and the force goes from the collar another part and then down under the front chest right so again we can see this these movements right these upper arrows right from the collar and then across the chest it's it makes a lot of sense it's very logical but of course it's like all right when you're drawing it how do you draw <laughs> how do you draw it you could have a you could have a an, uh, a reference image that could help you um but what is it that you're, you know what I mean? What is it that you're actually even drawing? I think it can be, it can be easy to get lost in all the patterning and stuff. So, um, all right, in the two sketches, top right, tracing the movement of the figure's arm, uh, the pull on the sleeve increases. The wrinkles work to show, uh, the wrinkles work to show extension. Not only do they become deeper, they become longer. Observe the extension of the arms in the same man uh, from behind. Uh, the tension in both arms starts from the armpit and curves upwards to the outer shoulder. In the multiple sequence drawings of the arm at right, the lifting action appears in three stages. The wrinkle creases are somewhat open in the lowest stage. At the middle stage, the creases are tighter. At the highest stage, they are tightly stretched, uh, thin and taut. Clearly, the effort of extension has increased the force of the direct thrust wrinkles. Uh, it's a... All right. So I know I'm like saying how great the illustrations are. And this one, it's like hard to, uh, <laughs> it's hard to get it. You know what I mean? But I think mm -hmm. what we can see at the very least is there's like a, there's a central point. There's, this is the point of tension in this particular cloth on this particular form. And all of everything is radiating out from this, this point of tension. Mm -hmm. So we can derive from this that if we wanted to, you know, be able to move this arm in any direction, that if we focus the radiating of these wrinkles from here, we're going to have a consistency, you know, across all these uh, variations on the form. Um, here's another uh, 
again, just complicated illustration. I think you could spend some time with it. There's something that you can get from them. Um, but clearly what we've, you know, what we've been talking about is that there are these points and um, uh, there's, a, there's a demonstration of this kinetic force that's moving through. Uh, it's, uh, the, the tale is being told more explicitly through the clothing. What we're going to see in a little bit is, you know, how we could think about this in terms of the body, because um, the body has flow as well. This is happening to a in a different sort of way, but very very similarly with our with our own bodies, with the muscles and the flesh. So, um, you know, anyway, it's just it's just another way of thinking about this uh, as it pertains to composing new drawings or being able to you know, get some of the results that, that you're after. Right. Uh, the series of movements shown here in the front and side views uh, of a simply attired man involve all the members of the body, so the arms, the legs, the torso, and the head. Both figures are going through the extension, elongation, and elevation of the limbs. The arrows following the lines of force on the figures demonstrate a fundamental rule for all wrinkles. Wrinkles follow the flow of action. If you can define the tension in a figure uh, that, that generate the direction in which the forces are unleashed of the wrinkles will follow. Observe how in each case, the members of the body show the direct thrust flow of wrinkles from the anchor points towards the thrusts or poles of action. The arrows originate at the anchor points of the collars, armpits, belts, crotch, and then go outward along these lines of force. Um, so it's not random, I think, is the, is, is the point. And if you just draw like random ass wrinkles, you know, like, I'm gu guilty, right? I'm totally guilty. But if you just, mm -hmm. if they're just random, there's something about it. I mean, it can be stylized. It might be interesting, but again, it's, uh, um, it's not, it's not demonstrating some, this fundamental rule, right? And that is that there's, uh, it, it's following this, this flow. It's following this energy that's moving through. It just does. I mean, that's like, like we talk about perspective, you know, quite a bit here. And it's not to, it's not to say that like following some rule of perspective is gonna, uh, you know, it's going to be the only thing that is going to help you. But certainly when we look, right, we see perspective everywhere we look. And when you see wrinkles, you're seeing this kinetic energy, like flowing through uh, a figure or a subject or I mean, even if it's like a flag waving in the wind, for example, um, it's still demonstrating uh, this same, this same like action, like this flow of action. So, yeah, look at this one. It's uh, backing up just a little bit, right? This outstretched arms guy. <laughs> so observe this male performer. Front and back views, he exhibits the direct thrusts of arms and leg extensions. First, let your eye scan the figure as seen from the front. Note the anchor points of the armpits, collar, coat button, midline, and crotch. See how all the wrinkles systems extend outward from each anchor along the lines of tension. And uh, take special note of the coat button. See how the wrinkle curves in every direction. So, uh... We can definitely see, you know, this sort of um, all this tension kind of right here. De definitely, you know, all the places mentioned, armpit, scratch, button. Here it is from the back, right? The back view figure shows the same dynamics as the front view one. Observe the anchor points for the garments in the armpits, collar, and waist. The midline crotch anchor is hidden from this view, but it affects the wrinkle pattern nonetheless. So also see the same outward extension thrusts of arms, legs, and torso. Follow the remarkable similar coat curves from the back collar. They curve wider towards the rear shoulders. Look further for the tension pulls of the outstretched sleeves. Then note the strong tension pulls on the stretched legs from the crotch. This creates long outward radiating wrinkles on the outer side of the figure's leg. We see several curves competing against the inside wrinkle tension. Um, they're creating cross wrinkles so yeah so see this this downward leg right we can see that there's there's two flows like sort of interacting with one another right and they're crossing over 
again, now we're really starting to get some very interesting patterns of wrinkles. Um, that would be very challenging. You know, they're very challenging to to comprehend or to create yourself, but but seeing them sort of interacting, um, there's a certain logic that I think is, uh, you know, is really starting to make sense. And if, you know, if we kind of zoom in maybe a bit, sorry for the, sorry for the radical sort of zooming and stuff, right? Um, we can see a form, right, that's being demonstrated here. There's certain pattern of shadows, certain amount of contrast that's allowing us to see these these shapes emerge. Uh, again, they might be slightly accentuated for the purposes of instruction in the book, but they're not overly, you know, uh, they're not overly emphasized, let's say, right? There's still a, an overall form, a shape of leg, and on it, we can start to see how these wrinkles cross contour, right? They sort of cross, you know, they go across the contour and not only give us form, but again, they there's forms on top of the form, which is, <laughs> the thing is interesting. Um, so let's, uh, let's continue. Okay, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up just slightly. So it's, it's gonna jump, so apologies. Yeah, of course, <laughs> sorry. Um, but you get to enjoy the illustrations again. All right, so here is this woman dancing, right? All of these flowing, you know, wrinkles that go all over the place. Uh, it's different in every one of these figures, right? But again, there's a real, uh, there's a decision that's being made. Here's a point of tension. And from there, we're getting all of this kinetic movement. All right, so. By now, the anchors of the armpits, the waistline belt uh, cinch, and the midline seem uh, should be familiar reference points. Um, as we have long seen, unimpeded wrinkles follow uh, the actions of elongated body forms. As you look at this leaping dancer, pay attention to the bent leg. Note that the action changes at the knee, so must the wrinkles. Right, so we can see right, right there. Wrinkles are all flowing in one direction. The knee bends, changing the trajectory of the leg and movement, right? The wrinkles are moving. Makes lots of sense, but again, it's uh, we gotta, gotta be pointed out <laughs> so that way we can understand it. All right, in this multiple sequence, figure depicting extreme arm leg extensions, the logic of wrinkles as they follow the flow of action is very clear. Check the anchor points and observe the subtle rotation of the hands, arms, and feet. Study the feet in detail. Note that the shoes at the center tend to, to turn inward, and when the leg is fully extended, the shoes turn outward. See how the wrinkles are influenced by the position of the shoes in each stage of the drawing. Um, let me try to, hopefully you can see it very clearly, right? Again, um, it's beautiful, right? I, I, for, to me, right? I think all of this sort of energetic flow, I think it's very beautiful. Um, and how we can start to understand, um, you know, the, the form that's underneath that's causing these wrinkles. Again, relating to a certain tension, a certain anchoring point. Um, this is likely something that might help your you know your tattoo designs for instance right there might be a certain point where you'll want to start these these energetic flows um so paying close attention to uh you know the patterns that you find when you're you know you set up a simple like towel or a cloth or something a drape and just look at how the wrinkles sort of develop how would you render that Put a strong light on it and draw it out. It's a really great uh, exercise. Okay, so here's this uh, very gestural figure. Man dancing, right? All right, so a conditional rule of wrinkles and folds is loose material tends to wind, wind curve, and spiral in active free forms. Look carefully at the extended uh, members of the sleeping dancer. They display long direct thrust wrinkles. 
Again, we have foreshortening of forms, notably in the advancing left uh, leg at left, and wrinkles going into spiral curves. Note the loose, wide sleeves and trousers, and see also the free-flowing sash. Virtually every garment here moves with spiral wrinkles. It should be clear by now that the direct thrust wrinkle system is easily predictable. As long as members stretch and move in whatever direction, we can anticipate their course and pattern as we see in this drawing. The thrust force lines always extend outward from the body along the arms and legs. An important subtlety to note when looking at this drawing is that our viewpoint is angled towards the left rear of the man in the, tight, in the tilted seat. The forms look somewhat foreshortened and elliptically curved. The rule is that the more that the forms recede or become foreshortened, the more the curved or uh, the more curved the wrinkles become. Right, so there's this guy sitting in a chair. Again, there's a point of tension, probably where he's seated and everything is really emanating out from that point. Um, yeah, elliptically oriented. There's a, there's a curve, curvaceous around here, around the shoulders. You can see that elliptical formation of, um, of wrinkles sort of starting to, starting to emerge. Well, anyway, um, that was, uh, that's the chapter. I mean, there's a little bit more to it, but of course I, uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. But of course I think, um, I want to encourage you to, you know, to check out this book. I will share the code for y'all. Check out this book, um, add it to your collection. I think it's, uh, it's one that I enjoy and I think you will as well. And now uh, I want to share, this is an image from Guy Atchison's Reinventing the Tattoo, where uh, we can see, let me get rid of this. We're seeing this exact, exact sort of principle, I think, start to be, um, you know, applied right to right right to our concern, right? Our 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 object is tattoos. That's the you know name of the show, drawing for tattooers. So we are thinking, we talk about art. We talk about like uh, you know how to how to compose things. You know, here is like, I think, a really interesting illustration of what we were just talking about applied to. Um, you know, tattoo form. And so this is, this is Guy's work. Uh, he's been thinking about this for a long time too, but this is what he would talk about as, uh, as like the most important thing, um, is that the way that it fits and the way that it flows on the body is going to, to be, um, uh, an incredible importance. And so, uh, yeah, I, again, like I saw this, you know, I was going through subjects, what are we, what are we going to cover? How about this idea of, um, you know, of wrinkles and then how does that pertain to tattoos? Well, you may want to draw wrinkles in your subject, right? You might want to draw something that has you know, folds and wrinkles and all sorts of things, but on a, on a, you know, a more direct sort of application, where is these, where are these sort of lines, you know, of force being directed visually in our subject? This is what this is uh, this is what Guy has to say about it, visually speaking. That you are gonna find there's all this movement happening. Um, it's gonna be related again to to anchor points where tension is being sort of drawn. Um, and so as you move it around, there may actually be um, sort of different sorts of uh, flow, different lines of flow that you may. That you may encounter, but uh, but yeah, there's the that's the <laughs> that's what I wanted to that's what I wanted to try to tie together art wise today, um, and I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it, everybody. Very good. Um, well, uh, we covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> we yeah, talked yeah. about the future of ink, and we also talked about um, this really complicated idea about flow it's mm -hmm. like the first chapter in the reinventing 
you know, book. So if you, you know, if you're interested in learning more, I'm gonna, I'll throw a, throw a QR code. I think it's been up. Scan this QR code in the upper, well, for me, it's on my left side, but scan this QR code and it'll take you uh, to reinventingthetattoo.com uh, where, of course, you can sign up for, you know, our nightly or our weekly drawing group uh, reinventing subscribers drawing group. Uh, you can also get access to the reinventing the tattoo book, right? So if you're into books, <laughs> this is a digital one that guy is always, uh, updating and it has a, it has a lot of really great knowledge in it. So can't recommend it enough. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, we've got some, we've got some people in the chat here. Jason Lisa, good morning. Love you, love your show. It's coming right up, everybody. It's going to be uh, at, at noon Eastern Standard Time right mm -hmm. here on Reinventing. So be sure to check out Skill Building Mondays with Jason Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, Bruno, morning to you as well, Bruno. It's great to, great to see you in the chat. Ah, uh, thank you, Bruno. Appreciate your, uh, appreciate your encouragement. Um, Bruno, you're welcome to join us anytime. We, you know, we love your work, and I think, um, you know, it's always it's always great um, getting a chance to catch up with you. It's convention season, and so hopefully we'll be able to all catch up really soon. Mm -hmm. um, well, Kyle, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to just check in with you, and um, you know, ask you, uh, have you have you ever read this book before? Have you ever seen this one, this Bern Hogarth one that we were covering today? Uh, no, I haven't, but it's awesome because it helps out with the piece that I'm working on. Um, and then secondly, it gives me a different insight to biomech sleeves, looking at anchor points and the flow of that. So I never put those two and two together. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely going to be re-looking at tattoos uh, on how um, they have it and how it flows and how it moves, you know? Um, I guess, yeah, it's just a... I know about the flow and fit and everything, but like, I don't know. I just feel like it, um, and adds a different angle to it. So, uh, super exciting, super exciting. That's um, awesome. Well, yeah. um, yeah, I think, I guess, that, uh, um, I, that was, I, I, I'll, I won't lie. Like I've, I just, I just made this connection myself and I, and I really believe, I really believe in it, right. That there's, that there's some kind of, there's some connection here to this idea. Like there's an anchor point. And things are flowing from this these points yeah. of tension. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, I'm looking at I'm like always looking at, at guy's diagram. And I'm like, what in the world? How do you get this? <laughs> yeah. How's all this movement happening, right? And I and I think you know if if you are um, composing your own, because I don't think he would say this is the you know it's the final word about how things flow. It's just yeah. a really great yeah. example of how to approach it. Yeah. But if you're really thinking about like how are you going to design your own you know, movement that might be, you know, have an origin or an anchor point and things are, are moving from it. They can always, you know, interact, cross over each other and whatnot. But, uh, uh, well, hopefully this has been, you know, useful for y'all. I hope it wasn't, you know, I, that's a, that's a part of what we're trying to do. I, at least I, what I believe in is that, mm -hmm. um, this is a, this is about fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm I'm not trying to dumb things down, you know. I really don't. I I I want it to be accessible, but it's also like sometimes it gets into you know it gets it gets pretty complex, um, and I and I think and here's what I would say: like if if you are you know if one is watching and thinking this is so basic, blah 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 blah, you're not looking hard enough. That's what I would suggest, right? That you're not thinking about it deeply enough. It is complex. It is accessible, but that would be the whole point of it is that you're always going to be working through it. And, and sometimes that's, I think that's what we, we, we mean when we're talking about fundamental principles is that you are always subject to them in some dimension. There's always, there's, they're always like a part of it. Mm -hmm. So whether you choose to recognize them or to disavow them, right there, there's still, <laughs> there's still some relationship to it. Um, but I, uh, 
I really, God, I really love um, getting a chance to to come on here on Mondays and uh, talk about these ideas with you all. Um, Kyle, I want to thank you so much for joining me and for uh, always. Um, yeah, man, it's awesome. It, it it's great having you know um, you know a partner to to talk about some of these ideas and to you know just sort of bounce bounce some of them uh, off of somebody else and get get some reactions and things. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, yeah, I uh, I can't wait uh, to see what else you come up with. Uh, we're going to get together tonight, Monday night, for the subscribers' exclusive drawing group. And uh, can't encourage you all enough out there uh, to join up because um, it's it's awesome. It's awesome it's having so a, fun. You know, yeah, just having a gr- it's. I tattoo, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I keep mm-hmm. I keep talking about it. Like yeah, I'm tattooing all day, and it's like I you know I there are the drawings I need to do for my clients. Sometimes they come with a very specific thing they want. Sometimes I get to draw something that's a bit more custom or something that I'm really interested in um, Mm -hmm. stylistically. And those are amazing moments. Uh, But having a group where we're actually just, uh, you know, we're we're just, you get a chance to experiment. You get a chance to get some feedback um, and put your work out there. I think it's really valuable. Um, So, uh we've got uh we've got things coming up um the tattoo pranar i'm <laughs> i'm uh I'm, I'm sure that i'm not pronouncing that right uh but want to give a give a thanks to uh tattoo now so uh tattoo now is technology for tattooers it is uh customer relations management software is um is a big part of of their offering so you know, if you want to learn more, you can scan the QR code or visit uh, visit Tattoo Now. Uh, so thanks, Gabe, for everything uh, you do behind the scenes. It is really it's really awesome. And then again, up there on top, we've got the QR code where you can uh, can direct you right to reinventingthetattoo.com, where you can uh, learn more about uh, the educational offerings that are there. You can also learn more about Guy Etchison by visiting guyetchison.com. Um, and so thanks guy for the, you know, for being the founder and inspiration behind this community. It's uh, really appreciate the space and everything that you're doing behind the scenes as well. Um, I want to say thanks to Kyle Olson. Thanks Kyle Olson for coming today and, um, yeah, yeah, you, know, for, you know, for like, uh, for engaging with these topics. It's, um, you know, it's always a pleasure to see you. Where can we find you? When we're um, if you want to get a hold of me on Instagram, it's right there, the Olson underscore tattoos. Uh, it's a great place to get a hold of me. Um, you can also get a hold of me at uh, trinityartcollective.com. Um, I'm out of uh, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, more than happy to talk tattoos with anybody. Um, so, and, and always, James, like, thank you for for having me um, here. And then um, it's super interesting topics that um, are definitely going to be super beneficial uh, to my day-to-day. Um, a, a definitely a new angle of looking at um, sleeve design, you know, because that's when you're look talking about the wrinkles. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this correlates with like, you know, like sleeve design. Oh, it does, you know, t- totally. And and like the whole um, thing of like the the different positions of like how farther out you move, the more intense the wrinkles get. So it's like, I just well, saw them just now when you like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, like yeah, 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 exactly. And so mm-hmm. I was, uh, I'm wondering um, when it comes to like. Uh, like say like a biomech sleeve design, like the to think of like how it looks when it's flat. Look, you know, look how it's there here, here. Like it's mo- it's overall movement and stuff like that. So um, super, super, super awesome. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you, Brad. No, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining us. Uh, number ninety three, episode ninety three. So uh, so amazing. Thank you, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm James Wisdom. You can find me on the internet at Tattooing Wisdom. Uh, This has been Drawing for Tattooers. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Happy drawing, and we'll see you next stream.